This is ON20 paper for variant 2, starting with question 1. So, gravitational potential at a point. If you have a mass, you have gravitational potential. But how do we define it though? You gotta think of it as the gravitational potential is equal to... Uh, oh, I should write it the other way. Hmm, okay. M5 equals to GPE. This one will probably help you memor memorize a little bit. GPE is gravitational potential energy equals to m times phi. Now this pattern looks very similar, right? Last time you all do m, g, h. Potential is like the g, h part of the the whole m, g, h. Lah, okay? But you want to define it as in terms of energy per mass. So phi equals to gpe per mass. What is gpe here? You can define it as work done moving a charge from infinity to a point, but don't forget per unit mass. Per unit mass. I don't care is a test charge. Is it a planet? Is it a satellite moving around? I've got mass. I've got a field. You guys moving around in my potential field. Potential well. And this is work done per unit mass. Moving a mass from very far away. So from infinity, infinitely far away, to a point closer. To a point. Think of it this way. Lah. If you are very heavy mass, you are like a potential well. Anybody that comes close to you will roll and be attracted to you. Test mass, satellites. Mm. Anyway, this is work done per unit mass. One idea. That is B1. If you say from infinity to point, moving it, the energy, moving it there, that will be another B1 mark. So that's gravitational potential. Now we come to some space science. The Earth is a uniform sphere with a mass in the center. Oh, let me just do some labeling here. This is R. Earth, ah, R E. Lah. To remind myself, mass M. Satellite. Oh, a very small satellite, small M. Launched from the equator. Oh, I just launched my pen. <laughs> Too excited. Leo. It's placed in equatorial orbit at a height above the Earth's surface. So we're going to call this H. Calculate the change in GPE of the satellite for its movements from surface up to orbit. So imagine that you're launching a rocket. Goes up. Now it's up there orbiting satellites. And you notice they didn't give you a picture. So in gravitational um, chapter, if they never give a picture, you got to draw your own picture. So let's draw our Earth and all our satellite stuff. So we have Earth. We are launching... Oh, we're trying to find the change in what ah? GPE from surface to orbit. So you have a satellite that's going to go from the surface of Earth, launch up to a certain position up there. Hmm, interesting. What equation shall we use? Ah? There is one gravitational potential energy equation, which is uh, GPE. Or sometimes we use the, the alphabet U or EP. This will be negative g m m over r they don't care too much about the negative you want to include negative sure you don't include it's fine so for the satellite off the satellite uh, we're trying to find energy off the satellite when the satellite is at the surface of the earth haven't launched yet maybe inside a rocket or something it's going to have some gpe right so i'm just calling this ep initial then you have some final energy when it's up there because you are launching up what is the change they didn't really say whether increase or decrease, but never mind. So we're going to find a change in potential energy. You can take final minus initial, or initial minus final, initial minus final, we don't really care too much. So the final position, that is GMM over R. What is this R, by the way? This R is when you are up there at a certain orbit at the equator, that will be a certain distance all the way down back to the center of the Earth. Between the big M and the small M. Big M is our planet, small M is the satellite. So what is that distance? Don't forget, there's two distances they give to us. They gave us height, H, which is from the surface up to orbit. Oh man, here we go again. Surface up to orbit, and also they give us the radius of the Earth, which is from the center to the surface. Don't forget to add both, okay? So this one, when you are up there, is going the total distance will be our radius of the Earth plus the height of the satellite. Also, we need to minus the initial when you're on the surface of the Earth. 
a negative negative ah. okay lor, I put a mm, I can put positive lah but I want to show you all the working so this one will be G M M over now we are at the surface of the earth so that would be down here what is the energy there well this is going to be R E that's all okay that's all all right sure let's let's do some calculations so I'm going to shortcut and factorize out the GMM because it is a bit troublesome to keep writing GMM. So 6.67 times 10 to the 11. Mass of the Earth, 6.0 times 10, 24 kg. Small m of satellite, 2.4 times 10 to the 3. I feel like I'm going to run out of space. Okay, then we deal with all the stuff inside there. So inside there, we're going to have the first one. Negative one. Wow, really not enough space, ah. I okay. Never mind. Just I'll try my best. R e plus h. Radius of the Earth, <laughs> six point four times ten to the six plus the height. Uh, where is the height? Five point six times ten to the six. Meter, all meters, right? Okay, all good. Then plus. 1 over Re. I guess I just have to scroll over. So 1 over radius of the Earth. So 6.4 times 10 to the 6. Now if you have a really calcul uh, really complicated line to type in, I recommend you use the fraction function of your calculator. So in case you don't know how to do that, I'm going to show you this once. So 6.67 times 10, negative. Did I forget the negative again? Ah yeah, negative 11. There we go. Back to this, times 6 times 10 to the 24, times 2.4 times 10 to the 3, times, ah now this part, you be careful a bit lah, because there's fractions here and there. So we're gonna put a bracket, big big bracket, and insert the first fraction, negative fraction. So this will be 1 over, you also put negative 1 I suppose, 6.4 times 10 to the 6, plus... 5.6 times 10 to the 6. Okay. Plus this other fraction. 1 over 6.4 times 10 to the 6. You could do algebra and all that, lah, but if you're, you press something wrong, many steps, you will get a wrong final answer. So if I hit equals, I get this value, which is... The beauty of this is it gives me in standard form. If not, you press the SD. Lah. If it gives you a fraction. So 7.0 times 10 to the 10. Beautiful. I like this calculator. Let's write it down. So the final answer here. Lots of decimals. 7.0 times 10 to the 10. That is the change in energy. 10.0 times 10 to 10. So you go from low GPE to high GPE because you're very high up in the sky. There is three marks for this. Where does that come from? Let's see. The very first one comes if you use the equation for GPE, which is this one. They recognize you using it. Got no, no negative sign, it doesn't matter. Second one, if you plug in all the correct values into your calculation, you're using correct radius especially. And lastly, your final answer, correct, then all is good. Uh, there's another method, by the way, guys. And this one is using the potential equation instead. So... Side note, phi equals to gm over r. You can find the phi here and the phi there. And if you want to find the change in EP, you just take the satellite's mass times the change in phi. Phi initial, phi final. That's also another acceptable method. Up to you, which one you use. Lah. Eh, good, good if you know how to use both. Let's move on. Determine the speed of the satellite when it is in orbit. Oh, that's that's a different chapter already. Wait, 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 wait. Orbit means, okay, so the satellite is going to be up there. It's not just chilling there stationary, you know. Orbit means it's going in a circle. So once again, if they didn't give pictures, just draw. It's just, just draw. Okay, so planet down here, M. You have a tiny little satellite. And now it is going in orbit. Probably... I don't know. Is it geostationary or not? I don't know. But it's going round and round. Around planet Earth. So what is the speed of this satellite? It's going to be moving at some speed V. I don't know. We're trying to find that, right? How do you find that V? Did it give us any information about the distance? Oh, 
we do know the distance from the previous part, from the satellite all the way to the center of the Earth. That will be radius of the Earth plus the height above surface. So when you see a circular motion question like this, the very first thing you should snap into your mind is this question. What provides centripetal force? What would you fill in the blank? Gravitational force. Why does this thing move in a circle? Because the Earth is pulling the satellite towards its center. So you could draw kind of like an arrow like this to show the gravitational force pulling the satellite to itself. And the satellite will go in a circle. So you need to equate both equations. No? Fg equals to Fc. Now Fg is a gravitational force. So that will be gmm over r squared. Centripetal force, mv squared over r. We want to find V, so we use the one with the V square inside. We can rearrange a little bit. Uh, think divide both sides by M. The M is gone. We want V, right? Uh, v square equals to GM over R. This will help me find the orbit velocity. V. Oh, move the square root to the other side. Okay, sure. Ah, so this equation will help me find the orbit velocity that we're trying to look for. Let's plug in all the values we know then. So V here will be square root of 6.67 times 10, negative 11. Mass of the Earth is 6 times 10 to the 24. 6.0 times 10, 24. Radius. Mm. This radius here is your orbit radius. So you need to include the whole thing. Why is this whole distance from the center of the planet all the way up to the satellite? That will be, oh man, we kind of found that just now, RE plus H, this one. So we're going to put there 6.4 times 10 to the 6 plus, what's the other height? This is 6.4, 5.6 times 10 to the 6. Okay, 5.6 times 10 to the 6. So here's my trusty calculator. It's easier, or I should say safer, to type everything as a fraction straight away. And you just do one question, one calculation, bam, you get the answer. Uh, I could probably write 5774.9. It's a bit precise, but sure. Let's write down the actual detailed answer here. So that would be 5... 4... Eh, sorry. 5774.9. But the final answer, I can pretty much round to 2 or 3 SF, so I could put 5770. Or 5800, also can. Because most of my values here are about 2 to 3 SF. So 2 to 3 SF generally is okay. Following the same or one more from the least SF. So it's all 2 SF. This one's a bit 3, but it's a constant. Okay, never mind. Well, your 3 marks, one comes from final mark. One comes from your equation, this one. Do you get to reach that? equation or you plug it in a calculation in this form we can recognize then that's okay then did you equate fc equals to fg if you did that's another bonus mark for you right there well not too bad okay remember uh, draw uh, gravitational draw just draw otherwise you will panic you don't know what's going on don't know what you're plugging in everything wrong so draw see it clearly stare at it let's look at this final one before the satellite is launched its speed at the equator due to the Earth's rotation is 470. Oh, we forgot that the Earth also rotates. Suggest why. So we're asking why the energy required depends whether the satellite is orbiting from west to east or east to west. Eh. Energy required to launch. Why does the energy required differ? Let me draw for you. I, I don't know. Most of the time, uh, students ask me, Miss, I don't understand. I draw for them. You see this? Oh, Miss understand now. Huh? Well, you, you learn to make yourself draw. Lah. Okay. So let's say we have a planet. And your satellite is going to be launched into a certain orbit. Like this. Your satellite could be going this way. Or it could be going in the other way. It de really depends on what you want to do with it. But remember this Earth is also turning. Perhaps in a fashion like this. So if your satellite is on the surface of the Earth, it already has some velocity, ma. 470, because it is on the surface of the Earth already turning. So maybe eh, some velocity like that. Okay, so there's velocity at the surface. Let's say you want to launch it up. 
and you want it at orbit to also have this velocity. That's not too bad. It's still in the same direction. But if you want to launch your satellite and you want it to move in the other direction, this way, wow, this V orbit is going to need a lot of energy because you have to change the direction completely. V orbit. So you have two choices. You could orbit in the same direction as the Earth's rotation, which is the two green arrows, or you could choose to make your satellite orbit in a different direction from what it originally is at the surface of the Earth. Which one you think needs more energy? Of course, la, the one you change direction, you see, you need to change direction. Leh. Here already turning to the right. Now you have to make it turn the other way. So that's how we need to, that's what we need to explain now. So, <laughs> what is the gain in energy? There's so many points we can talk about, uh, especially if you look at the mass scheme. But let's, let's make some points. So the Earth rotation is rotating from west to east. So it'll be easier if your satellite is also rotating west to east. You don't need so much energy to get it up in orbit. So you can say there's a smaller change in velocity if the orbit is also the same. Also west to east. Other terms you could use here, instead of smaller change in velocity, you could talk about a smaller gain in energy. You don't need so much energy to change the direction. Or you can say a smaller change if the orbit is the same direction as Earth's rotation. Or you can say once you launch from surface, automatically satellite already going from uh, west to east, following the Earth. So there's a bunch of points. You just need one point out of anything and you will get the mark. Okay? It's pretty helpful also in a later chapter when you talk about satellites, rotation, and communications with the satellite. But that is all for this question. Hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.